Uh, <laughs> Are you inside of the wall? Be very careful. I thought if I went to the, the corner of where the, the ledge and the wall is, I could maybe, like, jump. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh, no! Oh, I'm stuck, too. Oh, no, this is uncomfortable. I can see it your... Looks... I can just see your character's ass, man. I can't... <laughs> This is your character's stinky orc ass. This is like the worst. This is a terrible punishment to be like trapped. <sighs> I feel like we've paid the price for our curiosity. Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I ended up here, trapped down a 70 foot sinkhole with only an orcish gooch for company. Well, it's a bit of a story. Hi, I'm Vulgrin, and today I'm going to take you on a journey to the zone. Which zone, I hear you ask? A hidden zone. The Forbidden Zone, a place which 99% of the classic WoW player base has never even seen. I call it the Forbidden Zone because that makes it sound cooler and makes me feel like a stalker. You know, the Tarkovsky kind, not the creepy old man hiding in the bushes kind. How I first stumbled across the Forbidden Zone is pretty simple really. It's a classic tale of boredom and incompetence. I play a DPS warrior, so my current experience in Phase 2 of Classic WoW's Season of Discovery could be likened to repeatedly smashing your face against a door which has you're a dick painted on it. The pain is matched only by the shame. Let's just say that warriors aren't generating much rage in-game, but IRL it's a different story. I should mention here though that through sheer determination, a high personal skill level, and having some friends who are willing to carry me, I have managed to get my warrior into regular raids, so I am completing the current endgame content. Kinda. I'm not even gonna bother taking food because I shouldn't take much if any damage on this fight. Now we're gonna zoom out the camera. Shockwave. That was fucking dumb! But circumstances in-game have encouraged me to look outside of the box and find new, interesting ways of wasting my time in a 20-year-old game. Exploration has become my source of entertainment lately, and Season of Discovery does a good job of stoking that interest. Rune hunts and hidden quests like the one to obtain that mostly useless sleeping bag which looks like it was made out of Hagrid's used underwear are additions which have been really good at spicing up my classic experience. So, it's no wonder then that the tale of the Forbidden Zone originated with just such a new quest. One of the quests tied to the Nomragan raid is called Quadrangulation in which a goblin named Scooty from Booty sends you on a mission to find four fidget spinners dotted across Kalimdor. These objects are located in fairly obscure locations. One is on a shipwreck, one is at the top of a rocky outcrop outside Zolfarak, and one is hidden away at the very southern tip of the Isle of Dread. Now for a brief geography slash history lesson. The Isle of Dread is a large island located off the southwest coast of Ferelas in Kalimdor. You've probably never been there because despite its size, it's only tied to two bits of gameplay in Vanilla WoW. The first is a boring Naga kill quest you get from the Feathermoon Stronghold as an Alliance player around level 40, which only has you venture to the northern shore of the island and never touch the interior. The second significant connection to the Isle of Dread is to the Scepter of the Shifting Sands questline, truly one of the most epic questlines in the classic game. Many of the channels have covered that quest chain in much greater detail than I intend to go into here, but essentially the Scepter involved guilds progressing through a series of difficult endgame challenges across Azeroth, including raid content, and one of those challenges took them to the Isle of Dread, because this island is not like the rest of Ferelas. I mentioned earlier that Ferelas is a level 40-ish zone, and this is true. There are players currently locked at level 40 in Phase 2 of Season of Discovery questing in Ferelas as we speak, but the Isle of Dread is different. Yes, there are the Naga present on the northern coast of the island who match the level range of the rest of the zone, but if you explore deeper, penetrating the mountainous wall which rings the island, you will reach the shrouded jungle valley within its centre. Here you will find Lord Lakmeran and his Chimerok, powerful mythical creatures with two heads, wings, and very little patience for uninvited guests. All of these mobs are level 60 elite and above, which means that venturing into the heart of the Isle of Dread at level 40 is a bad, awful, terrible idea. 
Unfortunately, you don't have to go anywhere near these monsters for the quadrangulation quest, as the goblin fidget spinner you're after is tucked conveniently away on the very southern edge of the island, nestled in the foothills. So all you need to do is just run along the empty, peaceful coastline, enjoying the scenery and trying not to contract dengue fever. But this is classic WoW, an exploration of dangerous places which you have absolutely no reason to be in, is part of what makes the game fun. And it was the experience of exploring the Isle of Dread which started me and my trusty companions down the road of discovering the Forbidden Zone. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Before I go any further, I really should introduce the two dudes who made this adventure possible. Firstly, there's Tim the Swede. If you've watched this channel before, you already know him. If you haven't, all you need to know is that his name is Tim, he is a Swede, and he's got a body like Magnus Samuelson because carrying me for so long is hard fucking work. And the second member of our platonic, completely non-homoerotic threesome is Clueless, a member of our guild, the Bony Boys. Clueless is a fairly ironic name, considering that this guy had two fully biscuited characters at level 40 before I acquired even a single piece of gear in Nomragan, which by the way was Captain Hook's sword, and that doesn't... doesn't count. All three of us are proud members of the Bony Boys Guild on Chaos Bolt EU, and by the way, all the footage you see in this video was taken from my live streams on Twitch, so if you want to join the guild and play with us, or just watch the madness unfold live, I highly recommend you check out my Twitch and drop me a follow if you're feeling kind. I really, really appreciate it. Right, look, look I think you and I need to make a, an executive decision. Are we calling Car or Clueless? Car or are we calling him Clueless? I'm saying Clueless. You're saying Clueless. His druid's name is Clue. Yeah, and he probably is going to play fucking a druid, right? If we can't agree, we'll have to give him a neutral name like Dr. Plum or something. <laughs> Dr. fucking Plum. Yeah, from <laughs> He sounds Cluedo. like a sexually deviant medical <laughs> professional. You never play Cluedo? Clu Cluedo? You mean Cluedo? Do you say Cluedo? No, Cluedo. Cluedo? Yeah, like a clue, duh. <laughs> oh, is that like British Play-Doh? Cluedo? No, it's like, you know, clues. Like, in, let's in, find in the clues. Sweden, you just, you, you call it Cluedo. Fucking hell. So, the three of us found ourselves on the Isle of Dread one Friday night, running down the coastline until we discovered a break in the mountainous perimeter and decided to explore. What happened next? Well, I'll let the tape speak for itself. I'm gonna look it up. I know the I know the Naga cave, like, because I've been there, and even on Era I went there to quest. Yeah, um, you get a quest uh, from the Feather Moon um, Isle, yeah. I did it yeah, too. Yeah, around, like, level 45 or something. Oh, there's more, more Chimeras. Uh, is there? Oh, yeah. But I may it like this Hang on, can I like place should have like a world boss? Can I like creep up here or something and see what happens? Let's see what happens if I creep up here. We can definitely run past them. Yeah, if we need to. Do you want yo oh, yeah, you wanna go go up this hill. Okay. Oh. oh, I think this might lead us to our destination then. Yeah, we can cut through here, I think, to get to our our destination. That's good. I should have. I should have explored this route. Yeah, it just. Fuck. Yeah, I was gonna say you just jump over the mountain, but. Are you guys trapped? We might be. <laughs> oh my god! Oh no. Are you actually stuck? Yeah. Is this like literally something that they not fixed in like twenty years? For real. Yeah, we're stuck. Oh my god, you are. Like, who would design that? It's literally a bowl. Um. Oh god, and your hearthstones will be on like 24 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Can you pull the chimera? Oh, that's a good here? chap. Yeah, that's a good chap. Dude, this and is. Just let it kill us? So that we can ghost run? Yeah, I'll try, but th I don't know if I'll be able to do because this is a long way from that Chimera. The Chimera will surely, like, lo I'll lose aggro, dude. I know a way for me to die. I just don't know how Karth is going to die. W what are you going to do? Well, if Karth duels me and he gets me to 1% health, 
I can use my uh, my helmet because that deals damage to me and it right. would kill me. Okay. But I don't know how we we kill him. Do you know what? It it's a shame because if one of you is a warrior like I am, realistically there should be pathing here, and no. you'd be able to charge. Do you know what I mean? But you guys don't have those abilities. Is there any kind okay. of... Let's uh, do it like this. Just kill me. You're healing me. gonna spawn really fucking far away aren't i i think that the yeah unfortunately i'm pretty sure that the graveyard is on the mainland about like half a mile inland we'll soon find out oh i can't oh, oh there we go Where did you no, spawn? I, uh, oh, you spawned on the uh, island. Yeah, I rest at Feathermoon Stronghold. But what are we going to do about Clueless? I oh, fuck! Hold... Did you fall down? Yeah. yeah. I genuinely didn't mean to do it either. I didn't do it for the laughs or anything. I just had my screen zoomed into first-person mode. I wouldn't have fucking fallen down if you two guys hadn't somehow flopped down like a couple of poos into a toilet. I was just following you. You weren't following me. I was on the cliff top. But you were the one who was like, oh, I think we could skip up here. We could have done. Like, if you guys had just followed me onto the ridge, we would have just been over the top and down. We would have been halfway to Naris by now. Is he coming after you? Yes. Okay, don't go too fast. Is he still following you? Yep. Dude, what if he gets stuck up there and evades? Attack him. Attack I can't, him. I can't. Dot him. Him with some oh, I charged! Music. I charged! I got out! I got out with the charge. I'm fucking... I'm getting out of here. See you dudes later. Really? Yeah, I, I managed to charge out of the hole. Oh, he's doing corrosive venom spit on me. Yeah, he, he spat on me. Well done, though. Like. Yeah, I'm, I, I fixed the problem. <laughs> I'm genuinely amazed that that worked. I beat Blizzard. It takes a very special level of intellect for three people in the same party to fall into the same inescapable hole. You really should see us raid. This level of coordination extends well beyond self-entrapment, I promise you. But in all seriousness, it's easy to forget that places like this exist in World of Warcraft because Blizzard have done quite a decent job over the years of eliminating the majority of these prison holes from the game. It's probably due to how barely used the Isle of Dread was in vanilla that such a hole even exists here. I mean, this place is barren. Even Pontins gets more visitors. This is the first time I have been trapped in a pit like this in Classic WoW. Like I said, they are very rare indeed, so there is absolutely no chance, no chance, that it would happen again during the same adventure, right? No foreshadowing there at all. So it was as we explored the depths of the island, running from Chimerok, and trying valiantly to survive against the perils of our own incompetence, that the desire to keep going, to adventure beyond what most people would consider practical or reasonable, really gripped us. I mean, we had already traversed the Isle of Dread and made it back to the mainland with our hearthstones, if not our pride, still intact. It was at this point that I made what is on reflection a frankly bizarre and highly questionable suggestionable. I propose that rather than using our hearthstones or running to the nearest flight point in Feralis to get to the next objective of the quest, which was in Tanaris, the three of us should instead swim round the southern coast of Kalimdor, circumnavigating the fucking continent like Ferdinand Magellan, and arriving in Tanaris by sea instead. Now by this point it was like one in the morning or near enough, so perhaps I can blame this idea on fatigue rather than inherent idiocy. But what was even stranger was that my two friends, they were both up for it. Thus began our odyssey.
For some time now, I've been working on a video discussing the art style of classic World of Warcraft and why I love it so much. But really, is a video even necessary when I'm already showing the footage currently on screen? I get it, to some people this is not that impressive, just three guys riding and often swimming along a barren coastline at night. But to me, this is a great example of what makes vanilla look so beautiful in my opinion. The dark, imposing cliffs set against the clear blue sea with an ethereal starry sky overhead. It's just the contrast of colours and the magic that evokes which makes you feel transported to another world. I love it. So we ran along the coast like this for quite some time, and to be honest with you, I wasn't expecting to find anything. We've all accidentally fallen into the sea in Classic once or twice, and generally speaking, it doesn't lead to secret quests or hidden caves very often, where I was just not that kind of game. We didn't think that this epic voyage would be that epic, but even as we romped along, sometimes climbing high into the cliffs, sometimes falling down into the shallows, we were having a great time and we were eager to keep going. It's stuff like this, going on some pointless adventures late at night on the weekend with your in-game friends, which makes MMORPGs so fun to me. Knowing that elsewhere in the world, sensible people are running raids in dungeons, spamming battlegrounds or just idling in cities, whilst we were travelling through one of the most remote areas in the game. I even found myself wondering how cool it would be to bump into another group of identical dudes out there in the middle of nowhere. Kind of like our party, but from an alternate dimension, or, you know, the Alliance. But just as I was beginning to feel tiredness overtake me, and a growing awareness of the inherent pointless nature of our quest, we actually found something. What is this? A house? There's oh, a farm? Yeah, and a little windmill on the hill, and a boat down there, like... But there's no NPCs, no... No. Imagine if you could click on the boat and it would, like, take you somewhere. What is this place? Right, well, they, they did add stuff like this in Vanilla. Like, there are a few places like this. You know, there's one off the coast of, like, where the Twilight Highlands is? Yeah. You kind of go there for a rune quest, you know, where you have to use a little boat? Well, like, this is like that. But we, like, dude, like, this was worth it. We did find something. I didn't know this existed, like... No, neither did I. That's fucking sick. There's another tree here. That's crazy. <coughs> there, there, there's a cave! <laughs> fucking hell, man. Jesus! <coughs> I, I just... <laughs> fucking put the beer in my throat. There's a cave! Yeah, there is a cave. It's a fucking massive cave! What the fuck? It's a huge fucking cave. Bro. But just have a look, they might... What the f- <laughs> this is fucking huge What is cave. this? Is this just like a what massive empty cave? I like- Honestly, I had no idea that this was there. I recall somewhere in the distant past seeing a video exploring this area. Honestly, it was probably a top 5 video that I wish I'd made. Still, coming across this hidden Tauran farm, completely empty, yet strangely comforting down here at the edge of the world, gave our adventure a sense of meaning. I can imagine that, once upon a time, many years ago, players will have found this spot and wondered what it was intended to be, and if it would ever be included in the game somehow. Funnily enough, I feel like we're starting to come full circle, back to that mentality, as in the season of Discovery we've already seen how the devs make use of places like this as part of their new content. Who knows, maybe one day this little settlement might not be so empty. Honestly, I would have been happy if this was all we found on our adventure. After all, I did say that I didn't expect to find anything. Our intention was just to keep going at this point. We'd come far enough that doubling back or even just hearthstoning didn't feel worth it when we could just finish the journey and make it to Tanneris. We set off along the coast once again, content to make it to the desert without any further surprises. But like all good adventures, things never go as expected. I think we can get up here. Really? Yeah, yeah. I kind of want to stay on the beach and see what's here, but... We can. Yeah, yeah. And then I think we can... Ah, uh, and that's, that's where it cuts off, though, annoyingly. I don't think we can get up there, can we? Oh, shit! No. D d oh, don't go up here! Don't go up here! Stop. There's oh. a bowl. I think we could get out of that bowl. 
I don't think so. I'm not going to try it. I'm not going to risk it. Can we fly with this? No. Dude, it's so golden here. This is some cool shit. It's like yeah. some alien shit. Oh, we can go here. I'm so close to being able to climb in. Dude. I've done Whoa. it. We've done it. We've done it. We've made we it into the, the. We're into the forbidden zone. Dude, what the fuck? What the hell is this? <laughs> Whoa. Oh, we got around here. Holy shit. We did it. We've actually fucking did it. What the fuck? What the fuck? What is this? Dude, how the fuck did we manage this shit? Holy What is this place? Fucking Christ. Don't go down into the bowl yet. What the fuck? Well, we're not going to be able to rest. Okay, we're now... Down no, no, but, but we've all got our hearthstones. See, now I'm thinking about fucking wishing there was a thousand people in the stream, because this is fucking nuts. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna make a video about this. Is this Boldum? Uh, it's gonna be. This is south of Ungoro Crater. This is like the Ungoro Goro Crater. I don't want to jump down until I decide where to jump down. We could jump down inside AQ if we wanted to. I wish we had some fucking slow fall. Oh, dude, shit. Can you imagine getting like like 100 pallies versus 100 shamans up here on the cliff edge? Dude, there's I can see textures down there. Do you see that little round? Yeah, thing? I do. I do see that. I see a few further up in the line. Dude, I've got I've hidden UI. Like this is fucking crazy. This is fucking sick. Oh, I'm gonna have to make a video off this. This is like, I know people will have done it before. I'm sure, but this is just nuts. It's difficult to express just how cool this discovery was for me, because in a game which I've been playing for the better part of 16 years, there is very little, at least in the old world of Azeroth, which I can genuinely say isn't well known to me at this stage. But this area, strange and alien, and completely lifeless as it is, is one such place. It doesn't matter to me that people found this spot years ago, or that it is ultimately just an empty chunk of the map which Blizzard didn't have the time or inclination to develop further. It's a hidden area that players were obviously not supposed to find, but which I stumbled across completely through chance and my interest in exploration, and to me that's fucking awesome. What isn't so awesome is dying because your Swedish friend had one too many glasses of glurg and decided we should explore the inescapable death plateau where we ended up trapped and had to jump to our deaths. The result of this madness was that we all ended up taking res sickness and waking up in Silithus, at which point we called it a night and hit the hearthstones back to Ogo. But we weren't quite finished with this adventure just yet. A few days later, we returned. Only this time, we were prepared. For one thing, we started in Tanaris this time around, which significantly shortened the time we would need to spend running and swimming along the coast to reach the secret path into the Forbidden Zone. But there's still, this time Clueless had access to levitate on his priest, which meant that even if we had to take a death leap to reach an unexplored area, this wouldn't be a problem as he could levitate to the ground and then resurrect him and I after we sadly fell to our deaths. Not the most elegant solution to our earlier setback, but a solution nonetheless. Once again, we set out in search of strange, untextured wastelands, and for a while here, I'm certain Tim wasn't even sure I'd remember where the secret path leading over the impassable cliffs actually started. But fortunately, whilst my memory might not be great when it comes to things like the names of work colleagues, important dates my fiancé has asked me to remember, or, you know, locking the door at night, I am good at remembering stuff in World of Warcraft. Priorities, right? Are we in? Yeah, this is it. Oh man, that fucking memory like a elephant. Right, okay. I don't know why I ever doubted you. I don't know how the fuck I found that because it's not even. It's in no way easy, just, is it? You just know you didn't notice this part up here. You just noticed that we could climb the mountains, and I think that the idea was that uh, we could go 
over and into ta uh, Tanaris, and we just ended up being in this. Uh... Yeah, we kept trying to climb things, and it was when we were doing that that we realized this. Okay, this is what I'm looking at here. Like, look, we can get down by climbing down here, I'm sure. Like, we can hop down bits, and do you see what I mean? Do we uh, jump down, like, here or something? Clueless, I really want you to levitate, and I, I want to kind of, I'm going to hide my UI. And I'm going to just watch as you slowly disappear down into the distance. Okay. Whenever you're ready, dude. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Just imagine we just find something really cool down here. Well, like a giant skeleton or some shit. Yeah, like to the north or some shit like that. Yeah, I mean, it's just going to, I'm sure it's just going to be like more textured land. But just the idea of being down in the crate will be like shimmering flats. Dude, look at him go. He's getting so... <laughs> look how tiny he's getting. What? Yeah, I know. What the it's fuck? really far. Watching Clue slowly diminish into the distance like one of those McDonald's balloons they used to give you when you were a kid, and then jumping down onto the plane with Tim rekindled that earlier feeling of excitement, exploring a place that I had not only never been to in-game, but didn't even know existed. We ran around for some time, eventually confirming that we were directly south of Ungoro Crater, and could have safely jumped down into it had we wished. And as we were exploring, I thought to myself, it's interesting to consider why Blizzard left this area in game at all. The devs could have easily removed this vast area of empty space and just had the coast cut in a lot more once they rounded the south of Silithus and had reached the much smaller Ungoro. Instead, I think the answer lies in what this area of the game would become later on in its life cycle. Uldum is a zone which was introduced in the Cataclysm expansion, with an ancient Egyptian theme focused heavily around the mysteries of the Titans, who were at that time simply the godlike beings who brought life to Azeroth, you know, before the lore of the game became about as straightforward as Spaghetti Junction. Interestingly, Uldum was referenced as far back as Vanilla WoW, and if you take a trip to Tanaris in Classic, you will find at the very southwestern corner of the zone, a giant ruined gateway surrounded by powerful stone giants. This area is called Uldum in vanilla, and if you want my best guess, this is what the large empty zone south of Ungoro was going to be, and essentially what it would end up being once Cataclysm came around. I think the reason why it was left in the game at launch is simply that the devs intended to turn it into the Uldum zone, or possibly a raid similar to Ancourage, but they hadn't yet decided that the old world would need a revamp only six years later. Interesting stuff, really, and there's definitely room for some fun speculation here, so let me know what you think in the comments. What would Uldum have been like if it was released in Vanilla WoW? Whatever the reason for this place existing and still being accessible by players, getting to find it on our own without guides or even word of mouth was a great feeling which took me right back to those early days exploring Azeroth as a noob and I was probably channeling that noobish energy when, once again, I fell into a giant death pit because, you know, one wasn't enough, apparently. Steep. It, it is quite steep. It is quite steep. Oh, fuck! You, you fell through it? No, um... Oh god, this is actually terrifying. Uh... <laughs> Are you inside of the wall? Be very careful. Come to like I thought if I went to the the edge, like I thought if I went to the the corner of where the the ledge and the wall is, I could maybe like jump. Oh, <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Life takes on an entirely new meaning when you're trapped in a 70 foot hole punched into the ground by some careless developer, leaving you stuck with a 350 pound male orc repeatedly squatting over your face. At least Tim had the skill and gear to be able to shadow realm himself and get raised outside of the hole. Now that's soldiering. But sitting there, imprisoned, trapped by my own curiosity, I felt a sense of achievement despite my predicament. That mixed feeling akin to surviving a trip to the bathroom after a particularly strong curry. Sure, this adventure had come to an abrupt conclusion, and there was nothing left to do but hearthstone out and log off for the night, but this whole experience reminded me why I love Classic WoW so much. And it doesn't end here. There are several other areas of the world with seemingly empty zones which I want to check out with my friends. What's north of the Swamp of Sorrows? 
What happens if you swim around the coast of Arathi Highlands where the Twilight Highlands would have been? What happens if you go up around the Eastern Plaguelands? Will I get turned into barbecue by the Armani Trolls? Or will I get to hang out with cute Blood Elf chicks? We'll have to wait and see. And it doesn't bother me that there may have been other people who've done the same thing decades ago. For me, this is truly unexplored territory, and I can't wait to go on more of these adventures, to plumb the depths of many more as yet unknown death holes. Wow, that's not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. But if you enjoyed this video, and if you'd like to see more, please consider subscribing to the channel and let me know if you have any other ideas for adventures like this in the comments. With Phase 3 of Season of Discovery just around the corner, it's a very exciting time and I have ideas for quite a few videos that are already underway. Remember that you can check me out live on Twitch or play with me and the lads on Chaos Bolt EU. As always, I've been Vulgrin, thanks so much for watching, and until next time, Bye bye